us. I'm not here to learn your lines. I'm here to make magic. Make magic. Well, good luck. Next thing, and it, it was simmering, simmering, uh, simmering, for fork's sake. Why am I not prepared? Welcome to my kitchen. Today, uh, my sous chef is going to give me a box of mystery ingredients. Let's see if Russ is going to be nice or if Russ is going to be Russell. All right, Chevry. Think you can make us something? Most definitely. We have some very lovely beef short rib. We have the Bell's Porter. In my opinion, is the most criminally underdrank beer we make. It's absolutely wonderful. Russell is actually being very nice to me right now. We have some fennel. Fennel is gonna go so well with the flavor of that beer. We have some frozen cherries. We have some chili crisp. If you do not know what chili crisp is, it's getting more and more popular uh, here in America, but it's an absolutely wonderful uh, condiment. And that's everything. So first, I'm gonna braise some of them. This is a, This will be a really lovely and easy thing for you to be able to do at home. And these are beef short ribs. It's a section of the cut of ribs. Uh, as you can see, they have a good amount of meat, but also a lovely and wonderful large amount of fat on there. With all that fat and all that connective tissue, it does take a little bit for them to get going. So I'm gonna get these processed and get them seared off here pretty quickly. So I'm gonna season these good and liberally uh, before I do anything with them. If any of my culinary school instructors are watching this, I know I shouldn't be seasoning on the cutting board. I'm sorry. This is a fully pasture-raised and grass-fed beef from right here in Michigan, in Upper Michigan, right around here. This is uh, by John Nelson, uh, J. Nelson Farms. So we're gonna take this in. Uh, first, put it in uh, fat cap down. Get a nice, good sear on there. We'll do two at a time. You don't wanna crowd the pan. If you crowd the pan, it's gonna cool down too quickly and you will have a lot of problems getting some nice color on stuff. One of these, I'm just gonna do a nice rough chop on that I'm going to use uh, for the aromatics and the braise. And the rest of this I will save because we're gonna chop it up more finely for the filling for the ravioli. I'm about to use a food processor. We're gonna process up a little bit of cherries. These are uh, tart Michigan cherries. So what I'm doing with all this and why it's all so nice and finely chopped is we're going to cook this down with the ground short rib and hopefully turn it into a lovely little filling. These other short ribs, I'm actually going to cut them up and cut them off the bone. We're gonna grind these down and cutting these off the bone. Don't necessarily film this. This is a weird cut. Sometimes you just have to do that. We're gonna toss this short rib in here. We're gonna, that's gonna cook down quickly and nicely. Gonna add a little bit of salt to this. This short rib, there's a lot of fat in there, so we are rendering a lot of this really, really beautiful fat. We are gonna add the rest of our chopped vegetables and, some, and our cherries. We're gonna let this all just kind of stew down for a little bit. We are going to add another bottle of the Lovely Bells Porter to help cook all that down. All right, so that lovely filling we had going, I drained a good amount of the fat off of it. We we're going to take that, toss that into our food processor, and we will put a towel over the top because it's gonna be a little hot. You're getting a lot of nice uh, caramelized uh, roasting smells in there. The beef is going through a Maillard reaction right now. You're developing a lot of flavors. You're getting a lot of wonderful kind of deep roast, uh, roasted flavors going on in there. I'm gonna pull these out. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you have heard the word mir uh, mirepoix before. Basically, the, a mirepoix is kind of like the base flavors that you toss into soups or things like that. Carrot, celery, and onion are a very common mirepoix. And depending on what other food you're doing, sometimes that uh, garlic is added to it. Uh, sometimes stuff like a bell pepper is swapped out with other things. Now that the oil's hot, all the kids go into the pot. We are also going to put some garlic in there. And the internet is going to tell me that I put way too much stuff in that pot. I did. 
All right, so I'm going to try and do something really quick that I don't know if it's gonna work out or not, but we're gonna make some pasta. So got about 630 grams of flour, put some salt in there. Uh, we, we're using all purpose flour. We don't make pasta regularly here, but if you have like a double zero, super fine pasta, uh, semolina is also a really lovely thing to do. So I've got two whole eggs, uh, six yolks, and we're gonna put just a touch of olive oil in there too. But when you're making pasta dough, it will be a really good arm workout. You're gonna wanna knead it until it's nice and smooth. Mmm, all This is a fairly egg-heavy pasta dough, but I like uh, having a good egg-heavy pasta dough if I'm doing a filled pasta like I am. Uh, the egg brings in some needed protein and also fat that can be, uh, that's nice for both the structure and also the tenderness of the pasta. You want a fairly nice homogenous dough that is gonna spring back a bit when you uh, press it down. The pasta is going to get twice as thick when you actually make the ravioli, so you're going to want to roll it out pretty thin. Personally, I love making pasta. I find it to be a very meditative reality. To have that like al dente bite, you need to uh, you have to just make sure there's enough kneading and enough gluten built up in there. You want to make sure that you put plenty of flour in here, especially like a pasta like this that has a lot of egg in it. It does have a good amount of moisture going on in there. And you definitely do not want it to end up sticking together. The sear is already really good on that because I'm just going to get these in here and uh, going well. We're going to place our short rib right on top of there. This is our absolutely lovely Bell's Porter. I would love everybody to start drinking more of this. It is quite truly the best cooking beer I have ever come across. So it's going to help to deglaze and bring some wonderful flavor in here. I was talking about the chili crisp er earlier, but I'm gonna add some of this to this brace to really boost some of the flavor in there. It's gonna bring a little bit of heat, but, and I wish you could smell this. Uh, there's uh, such a wonderful complexity of flavors and smells going on in here. Gonna add some beef stock. You know, keeping some stock on hand and around is always a lovely thing. Next, we are going to get all of this lovely filling that we cooked down. And again, uh, this is the short rib, garlic, fennel, um, onion, cherry mixture. I cut the pasta into, into sheets just so it's easier to work with. Making pasta is a difficult part. Um, ravioli is actually one of the easier pastas you can make. Really impressive if you want to impress on a date or anything like that. Probably to make life easy, I'll just do two on each of these. of which we're going to put an egg yolk right in the center. It almost turns it into like a self-saucing pasta. Then we'll just lay the other sheet right over the top. And when you have a stuffed pasta, you want to make sure that you uh, get as much air out as you can, because it could explode when you cook it. It's still gonna taste just as good. <laughs> it's just not gonna be quite as pretty. And being the fancy person that I am, I'm just gonna make some nice big squares because I'm not particularly hip. I'm just kind of a giant square. I'm gonna crank this water up so it comes up to a nice boil. We are going to uh, salt it. With filled pastas, whether it's ravioli or tortellini or even pierogi, a good way to know that they are done and cooking is that they will start to float up to the surface. And so as you can see, the pasta is starting to float up. Take the pasta very gently out of the water. Very quickly put it into the hot butter. Let it go around a little bit. I'm gonna crank that heat off. And just for a little bit of fun, I'm gonna put a little bit, a couple more of the cherries in there. Butter is gonna brown up a little bit, which will be nice and lovely. And we're gonna take it and garnish it with a little bit of that butter, a little bit of these cherries and then with just a touch of the chili crisp so that we use all of our ingredients. And now, as you can see, the yolk is nice and lovely. Like I said, it's kind of like a self-saucing pasta. That's good. What do you like about it? 
texture of the pasta, obviously, the spice from the chili crisp, the, the egg yolk, it's delicious. It's very good. Surprised me. Yeah. That's weird. We're gonna plate up that short rib. This simmered for about an hour and a half to two hours. As you can see, the short rib is basically just all falling apart now. You can always mix this up, like, you can always toss some potatoes in there. You can really play around with whatever you want in there. Um, but this has been going for a good little bit. In fact, the bone fell out of it. That's always a good sign that it will end up being tender. And like I said, of the stuff that we're doing today, this, is, this would be a really great and easy dish for you to do at home. All right, moment of truth. That's good. Well done. The beef's super tender and then the sweetness from the carrots, delicious. Especially in the amount of time to get the short rib as tender as you did and get that much flavor from the demi and stuff, unbelievable. Thank you all for joining us for our first time doing Most Chef in Italy. I promise next time we do this, we'll be far less awkward and far more entertaining. We'll get better at this. Wow, Russell is so helpful. That, that didn't sound like a yes chef. Yes <laughs> chef.